Good morning, everybody. Uh, today we have a code force round, educational round. It's a uh, one ten, and should be pretty fun. So I'm gonna compete in it today. I'll show my screencast of me competing now, and then at the end of the screencast, I'll over the solutions to all of the problems that I know how to solve. I am just getting over a cold, so my voice is a little rough today. Uh, it shouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, should be able to make it. I'm a few minutes late. Started about two minutes in, uh, but that's fine. All right, here we go. Fair playoff. Four players participate in the playoff tournament. The tournament is according to the following scheme. The first player will play the second, third play fourth, and the winner of the pairs will be in the finals of the tournament. It is known that in a match between two players, the one who has the greater skill wins. The tournament is called fair if two players with the highest skills meet in the finals. Determine whether a given tournament is fair. Um, oh, four players. Okay, gotcha. So it's just the, yeah. So if the min of these is bigger than the max of these, that's a problem. All right, we can handle that pretty easily. So we can read our array. Rig says four. Um, and a max one equals that, that max eight zero eight one. And then int min two equals max dot min of it two and it three. And then a max two. So we have this, so now we just want to check uh, min 1 is less than max 2 and min 2 is less than max 1. If this is the case, we print yes, otherwise we print no. I believe. Alright, looks good. So that's problem A. Man, my voice today. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, anyway. Hopefully I make it the whole time. We'll see. We'll see. All right, problem B. Array reordering. You're given an array of n integers. All right, we got it. We got it. Nice, nice. An array of n integers. I could be like the guy who sings the Grinch, you know. I got. I totally have it. Like, you're a mean one. Okay. Pair of integers, i, j, good. If uh, i is less than j, the GCD of a at i, two times a, j, is greater than one. Find the maximum number of good index pairs if you can reorder the array however you'd like. Well, just put all the even things first and then check. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so the only difference is like, okay, so we need even things first and then we need GCD and then we'll do runtime of 2000 squared GCD calls. Uh, return, so B equals zero. A, otherwise GCD, B, A, minus B. So that's GCD, and then we need uh, N, size of the array, we need the array. So if A at I mod 2 equals 0, A at I plus equals 10 to the 6. So it's big. Uh, then we'll sort this. 
uh, then go through and subtract these out. And then uh, we'll do our for loops. So I equals n minus 1. We're going to go backwards here, greater than or equal to 0, minus, minus. j equals i minus 1. j is less or j is greater than or equal to 0, j minus, minus. If gcd of uh, a at i, or a at j, and a at i. A at i and a at j times 2. Because we have the multiples of 2 at the end. If this is not equal to 0, then I have 1. Uh, count plus plus. And then print the count. Four zero nine 9. Looks good. Um, I don't think we should have runtime issues. It's possible we do, but I'm not too concerned. All right, let's move on to problem B. Listen to CF notifications to see what our result is on that. Problem C, we're given a string. We're given a binary string with question marks in it. Let's call it unstable if the character is 0 and 1, or if it consists of 0 and 1 and any two adjacent characters that are different. Oh, so it's either, yeah, so it's one of these two. Uh, let's call it beautiful if it consists of these, and you can replace question mark so that it becomes unstable. Yep, calculate the number of beautiful contiguous substrings of this string. So an easier way of doing this would be if we flip every other thing, then it's just the same. Might be easier for us to think about it like that. Um, so then we need to count how many continuous ranges. Uh, could be all one character. So we can do a two pointer sweep for that. And then we can count for something, whether we have a zero or a one or a question mark. Uh, there you go. All right. Very good. So we have our test cases. Excuse me, be right back. You know, I could just sit this one out, but uh, nah, 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 nah. Got to practice, you know, even when you're sick. So if this character was a 1, then set it to a 0. Otherwise, if it's a 0, uh, set it to a 1. Otherwise, it's a question mark, in which case we can leave it. So now we'll do our two pointer sweep. So, first of all, we'll have long count equals zero. Set this count at the end. 
Uh, not too many test cases, I don't think, so it should be fine. Don't need print writer. And then we have to see we have to do our two pointer sweep. So I'll have int z count equals zero, one count equals zero, uh, an l pointer equals zero, r pointer equals minus one, uh, and then say well r pointer is less than n, or is less than line dot length. Uh, okay, so first of all, we'll say r pointer plus plus. Now we have to include this character. So if line at r pointer, uh, I guess this plus one. Huh? Um, if this equals question mark, well, if this equals a one, then one count plus plus. Else, if line at r pointer equals a zero. And z count plus plus. So either we have one more uh, one more one or one more zero. And what else might we have? So after we've done this, if there's a question mark, we don't really care. But after we've done this, we might need to move the left pointer if we have both a one and a zero. So while o count is greater than zero and z count greater than zero. Uh, if line, so if the left pointer is pointing at a, at a one, then O count minus minus. Otherwise, if it's pointing at a zero, then subtract one from the zero count. And then either way, Increment the left pointer. All right, so now we've moved the right pointer over by one, and the left pointer is now legal. So now we need to add this to our total count. So count plus equals r pointer minus l pointer plus one. Looks good. I'm using longs. Should be fine. Too worried about that. Let's like we'll move on to D. Looks like we got it too. Oh no, not another tournament. All right, two of the K teams are participating in a playoff tournament. The tournament consists of two of the K minus one games. Yeah. Uh, first of all, the teams are split into pairs. Team one plays against two. Okay, so it's like this picture here. Let this consist of two of the K minus one characters describing the games in chronological order. Yep. Let this be the number of possible winners of the tournament described by the string. The team is a possible winner of the tournament. If it's possible to place any, any very question mark such that team I is the champion. What is F of S? Oh, the number of possible winners. So we replace some character with a C. Let's replace some game with something to determine how many possible winners there are. So we just build the tree and then do the modifications. Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so these two. We reverse the order might be easier. So if we call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then the thing goes to two times your index, and then two times your index plus one. So I'm gonna do that. Those are your two kids. Uh, and then what about that? So you just need to know if it's a question mark, it's the sum of the answers of your two kids. Otherwise, it's whichever kid you're looking at. Good, okay. Well, it should be pretty easy. 
So uh, we're gonna build this tree here. So we'll need a node. We need a node left child and then our child. Public node create. One test case too, which is nice. one and then ID will be ID times two plus one or ID times two and then our child will be ID times two plus one same depth though okay so this will give us our tree so let's build this tree here so first we're given K So next step to carry. All right. We have a node uh, tree. This new node. So this will be, yeah. So it's one, two, three. So we'll make this size k minus one. Next one. Alright, I don't know that the ID matters too much, but anyway, okay, so then we need to process the number of queries. Is this many? We're going to go through each query. And then we'll say, this is the index in the string. Okay, so oh, first we have to update each thing. Okay, so yeah, so we also probably want to pass in the array here, so the care array. So we have this uh, so my care equals a at a at length minus one or minus ID. mark if it does return two otherwise return one uh, okay otherwise 
if my care equals a question mark. Um, and possible winners equals the left child's new way plus the right child. Okay, if my care is equal to a one, then n possible winners is equal to uh, the lower. So if it's a one, it's the lower, which is the, the smaller index one. Right, if it's a one, team with the greater index. So for me, it's the smaller index, so it's the left child. Uh, L child dot n possible winners, else impossible winners equals our child that impossible winners. All right. Cool. So we have this. Good. All right. Int index in two. We also need the depth. Okay, so then we need to say this dot depth equals depth. All right. So, uh, oh, we just, I guess we just need the parent. Yeah, so we can just update whatever node and then update the parent to. Some node array all nodes, uh, and then we'll say my care equals. Well, let's make a public void recalc up. So recalc for me, and then if care is not equal to null, then pair dot recalc up. This is your first version of that. Uh, so to set this, we'll just say my care equals two. This needs to be a character. And then we calc up. Should take 18 turns. process each of these queries. So int index care two equals this type to care at zero. Um, and now we need to set this thing. Okay, so a at index equals two. And then we need to say all nodes at all nodes dot length. Minus index dot set 
to two. Okay, and now sys out or out dot print line uh, tree dot and possible letters. Zero, one, two, three. Oh, so this should be an x minus one. One, two, three, three, five, four. Okay. Looks good. Let's see what our verdict is, and then I guess we'll read problem D while we're, or problem E while we're at it. All right, we got it. Nice, nice. Problem E, we've got a rooted tree. Each vertex contains several tons of gold, uh, which costs this much per ton. I guess it's different per node, apparently. Initially, the tree contains only a root, numbered zero, with a sub zero tons of gold in this, many, or this price. We have a bunch of queries. Each query has one of two types. Add a vertex. Uh, as a child of some vertex, pi, this vertex will have this many tons of gold. Okay, so we can add a new vertex, or we can say for some vertex, consider the path to the root, we need to purchase wi tons of gold on this path, spend the minimum amount of money. If we buy gold from some vertex, it decreases by x. Okay. I see. Yeah, so like the process or the problem is that you might have um I guess if you do HLD, it's not a problem. Are these online? It is online. Okay, so not HLD. Because I don't want HLD. Okay. <coughs> um, well, what else could we do? It does kind of scream HLD, right? It's like we want to take the max along a path, update it, and then recalculate it. Uh, what if we do a link cut tree? I guess you don't need to, you just need a display tree. So if we do a display tree. Oh, it would be a link cut tree. Yeah, so we could have a link cut tree where we store the min vertex and then we can update it recursively. All right, so do we have any problems with this? Uh, no, because each node is in at most one chain here. All right, so that's one solution, the link cut tree, yeah. That seems like overkill, but it's fun. Get me a chance to bring out, break out my link cut tree code. We got a big time limit, and it'll solve it in n log n, which might be better than what they're looking for. Let's do it, let's do it. All right, so structures, link cut tree, that we're gonna need splay tree as well. All right, 
Okay, so let's yeah, let's take this. We cut tree. Then we need our splay tree. Okay. So we have a bunch of these cool fun root path aggregate. So this is what we need. Oh, we don't need to prop, right? Do we need to propagate anything? No, no propagation. Propagation. Oh, we don't need this. Okay. We also don't need some. We just need the best. So this needs to be in best. And this needs to be in node. Okay, this dot node equals this dot best equals data. What else do we have here? Recalculate. So x dot best equals x dot node. Uh, all right. So we need a better method. Static int better int a and b turn a. Well, let's just throw null. X dot best equals better x dot best kid. <laughs> is that it? That is it. Nice. All right, so we have this. Path aggregate. Yeah, so this is just um, v dot best. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. We don't even need cut that easy. Kind of overpowered if you don't mind me saying so. Um. All right. Okay, so this is going to be single test case, I think, right? Number of queries, the amount of cold in the root, and the price of the root. Okay. So we have int n queries um, equals this. Alright, so now we need a bunch of splay nodes. So this will be splay array splays equals new splay array and queries. Yeah, we'll just create them when we need them. Um, and then we'll also have like some node array.
Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. I'll have call these A, A, and B, B. So that our node A equals node to A, A, B equals node to B, B. So if A dot amount equals zero, return B. B dot amount equals zero, return A. Otherwise, we have at least one of each. I'll return uh, B, B, I guess, return A, A. Um, otherwise, you have at least one of, e of each. So if a dot cost is less than b dot cost, then return um, return. A else return B. Okay, a little bit of a uh, infinite loop on my brain there for a minute. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so now we just need to do this. All right. So blaze it's okay. So nodes equals new node array and nodes. Uh, sorry, and queries. Nodes at zero equals new node. Um, this and this. Splays at zero equals new splay. Just node zero, right? Okay. So, in type equals this. If type equals one, otherwise type equals two. Yeah. Okay. Add vertex i. So this is the ith query. Okay. As a sun to vertex pi. So int parent equals this. Uh, they should go from one to be less. Well, yeah, let's make them go from one. Uh, this is, then we have the amount. So nodes of parent equals new node fs fs. All right, so what now? So we have the node we're about to create. Yes, now we need to link them up. So splay at, uh, splay at what? Splay at parent equals new splay parent. All right, sorry, splays. And then we need uh, to link splays at parent to, ah, oh, what am I doing? So this is nodes of QQ. This equals this. So displays at QQ. All right, good, good. We can do this pretty easily. Now, what about type two? Here's where we need to process it. So, By this many tons of gold. Okay. So int node equals this. Int amount equals this. How much can the amount be up? 10 to the 6. Okay. So we need to repeatedly um, buy the cheapest until either there are none left. Or uh, we buy all we need. Okay. Uh, there we go. Good, good. 
because we actually do this. So we need to do a path aggregate. Let's just do a while true for now. Um, int best equals path aggregate from from the root to displays at node. Okay, int amount to buy equals All right, so we have the best thing we want to buy. So if nodes at best dot amount equals zero, then break, then we can't buy anything else. Uh, otherwise, int amount to buy equals math dot min. I guess, well, we'll do this in a minute. So math dot min of nodes at best dot amount or uh, the amount I have. So if the amount to buy is equal to zero, then break. Otherwise, long ants equals zero. Wait, what are we printing? We bought and the minimum amount of money we should spend. spend. Long spent uh, into amount bought. Okay, so now what do we do? So we say nodes at best dot amount minus equals amount to buy, amount bought plus equals amount to buy. Uh, amount minus equals amount to buy. Spent plus equals nodes at best at cost times long amount to buy. And then out dot print line. Uh, amount bought plus space plus how much we spent. Okay. Uh, that's a problem.
Um, okay, so we, we should just be able to modify this like in this. We should just be able to say v.pathparent equals u, right? Because when do I call link? So display as a parent, pass in qq, yeah. So this should be legit. All right, so we are not doing this right. Okay. Let's draw it out and see where we're going wrong. How about that? All right, so. We have a node that sells five for two dollars. This is node zero. Then we make node okay two. So we buy two things. Uh, buy two for two dollars. So it's the same as three for two dollars. So we can modify this query to get rid of this first one. So we can get rid of this. Sells three. And now we just do this. Okay. About four four queries. annoying uh, okay so this makes a new node that's the parent so here we buy from node one okay, so let's see does this break it three six but it should be uh, three ten okay Wait a minute, why? Oh yeah, so we buy several for, yeah, okay, this should be fine. Yeah, what's wrong? Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, so then when we modify this, we need to recalc. Displays at, or I guess just is it called recalc? Yeah. It's a good test case. Recalc displays uh, at best. So now we need to. Six queries, and then we'll say, Oh, yeah, I guess we're fine. Uh, I am using print writer, right? Yeah. 
All right, looks good. I may have overcomplicated that solution, but I think it's right anyway, so I'm not too concerned, but I guess we'll see. Man, geothermal is so speedy, it's actually insane. Took me, well I guess it took me like 22 minutes, but still, he's so quick, it took him seven minutes. It took him almost as long to get D. I guess D was mildly annoying, but still, crazy. All right, can I, can we run my code to it for us, please? Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I guess I'll read F and then see what's going on. Suppose you're given two strings, A and B. You can apply the following operation any number of times. Choose any contiguous substring of A or B. Sort the characters in it in non-descending order. So sort, sort the characters in some substring, okay? Let this be the minimum number of operations you need to apply in order to make them equal. What? For real? Idleness limit exceeded? What? <laughs> <coughs> what does that even mean? Oh, because I'm not doing it online. Yeah. Forgot about that. Okay. Uh. Let's try that. <laughs> Oops. Am I going to TLE on test case 2 for real? Bro. They're going to make me TLE on test case 2. You can't do me like that. That's not very nice. My solution's n log n. It's n log n. What more do you want from me? What more do you want? What are they? What are they even looking for?
Hmm. Hmm. All right. What if we try doing this naively? thought this was a generous time limit, but it looks like it's kind of killing me here. For real. Yikes. Not even that difficult. It shouldn't, hmm. So what's our runtime? It is n like n, right? Like you take from, you can only take from each node once per query plus one time. Right, like a query can take from one node partially and then every time it takes from a different node, it removes the node.
guess we're just TLing forever over here. Oh, why would that be? Okay, we could do static int array amount costs. Oh wait, so we don't need, yeah, we don't need make root, right? We don't need cut. We don't need flip prop. So we don't need prop. Okay, so we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this. Oh, uh, that's, that's a speed up. need to fix this okay so amounts of best and this is amounts of best costs of best Really gonna they're really gonna do this to us? Ugh, so annoying. Am I gonna need to convert this to C? This is dumb. This is so dumb. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. And make tests first.
Um, all right.
How is this so slow? Doesn't make any sense. Okay. Total loops equals zero. Man, this is killing me. It's in log in. All right, let's come up with a new solution, I guess. Maybe this is not meant to be, or should I convert C++? Let's think about a new solution for a minute, and then convert C++ if we need. Uh, <coughs> all right, so here's the idea. Or the problem is we've got some tree, and we need to query the min along a path. But there are different paths that interact. So, like this might be the min. If the min is lower, we'll just want to take it and then go from there. Uh, or not necessarily. Yeah, we want to query the min above, and then we also want to remove an element. Seems to be the way to go, doesn't it? Using path compression stuff.
Ah, uh, this seems so right. <coughs> uh, hmm. Why is this slow? That's what I don't understand. Is it an infinite loop? What could be infinite looping? For loop won't. This while loop could, but we should be crashing if it did. That's Those are the only two loops here, unless my, I'm breaking my tree. But I don't think I am. Because all I call is link. Yeah. All right, convert to C++ time. Ugh. Hmm. So then we need splay tree.
just copy this. Answer test two. That's super annoying. So fast. What the heck? Literally the worst. <sighs> Screw you. <laughs> Obnoxious. It's obnoxiously annoying. All right, we'll read an F just uh, just in case. But oh yeah, this thing. That's dumb. Did they not have any Java testers for this? That's dumb. All right, well, mm, this is a really disappointing, sad story. This took almost an hour of dumb things. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Okay, all right, well, let's, let's talk about solutions, I guess, uh, to A through E. So for problem A, um, you need to see, you're gonna have a two by two tournament. So it'll look like this. You'll have A versus B, and then C versus D. So one of these will win and one of these will win, whichever has the higher skill. Um, and then what you need to determine is, are, the, are these two people the best of the four? So if you know what the better of these two are and you know what the two best of the four are, you just need to compare them to make sure uh, those actually match the best two. So what you could do is like sort this array of four things um, and then check to see 
if the max of this and the max of this make up the best two. Excuse me, sorry. Um, so yeah, so that's one possible approach. The approach I used is a bit more roundabout, but basically the only time that the best two people wouldn't be in the finals is if the best two are in one of these groups. So if the minimum of some group is bigger than the maximum of the other, uh, that would be the case. That's what I checked. That's an equivalent way of doing that, um, and the code for that looks like this. So you get the minimum and maximum of each group, and then check if the minimum of some group is bigger than the max of the other. Uh, if that's the case, then both of the good people are in the same group. Okay, uh, all right, that's problem A. Problem B, you have some array of n integers, and you want to take the GC of some element with two times some element after it. So when you're doing this, um, the order of the elements matters because i has to be less than j. So when you take like the GCD of some elements, if something is later, it'll be multiplied by two more. You also only want to see whether this GCD is one or not. So what that means is if this two is helpful in the GCD, then that means the GCD will be not one, right? So what we can do is just rearrange the numbers so that all of the elements with twos come first. Uh, this is optimal because then anything after it will match with it. If you have a two, anything after you will match with you. So if we put all the things that don't have twos at the end, they'll still match with everything that does have a two. Uh, yeah, so that's the idea. We'll do that. And then you can just manually check the GCD of all pairs to see if those GCDs are big enough. Uh, here's what that looks like. So what I do is if it's even, that means it's a multiple of two. Like if it's a multiple of two, uh, then I add a million to it and then I sort them. So now all my multiples of two are at the end and then I do the same problem but backwards. Uh, and then store how many pairs are not co-prime, how many pairs have a GCD over one. So yeah, that's the solution to problem B. Um, all right, problem C, unstable string. So in this problem, you have a target string, which is it alternates from zero to one to zero to one to zero to one. And uh, you wanna see um, so that, that's that's your, your unstable string, that's what you want to alternate between zeros and ones. You want to see for how many ranges of some binary string with question marks in it. If you replace the question marks in some way, for how many possible continuous ranges could that make your target unstable string? Uh, you're counting the number of ranges, not like the number of ranges times the number of ways, right? So like if some range could be either 0101 or 1010, then you only add one, not two, because it's the same range for both cases. Um, all right, so that's the idea. How do you actually solve this? Well, let's do a quick simplification here. If we're looking for the string 0101 or for 1010, the important part here is that it changes each time, right? So it changes every time. What we can do is if we have some string, we can invert each of these, each of the odd indices. And now what we're looking for is a string that's 0, 0, 0, 0, or a string that's 1, 1, 1, 1. And for me, this is mentally easier to understand, right? We're looking for either how many continuous ranges of zeros or continuous ranges of 1 are there in the string. So for me, that's much easier to understand than we have these complicated patterns. Uh, I guess in code, or if you're infinitely smart, you don't need to make the simplification. You can just solve it originally. But for me, I think this is easier. All right, one sec, I have to blow my nose. Oops, didn't turn off the microphone. Well, oh well, uh, I'm sick. That's how it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So yeah, so we want to count how many continuous ranges could be all zeros or all ones in this new simplified problem. Okay. 
Um, how do we do that? So you've got some string, right? Um, if it only has zeros and ones, this is pretty easy. We can just split it up into groups like this. But we have a problem here, which is there are question marks. So if we've got some question marks, uh, the groups will look like this. So it's a bit bit more tricky, right? Maybe we have now it's yeah, so it's a bit messy here. It's like that, or that, uh, or that. So you can split up the groups manually, but what I do for this is um, let's do some example here. So I do a two pointer sweep. So if you have some continuous range, it's got both a zero and a one, that means it's too big. Uh, if a range is too big, then you can remove from the prefix until it's small enough. Right, so now we have this string here. We can add one more character to the string, it's still small enough. Uh, then we can add one more character to the string again. Now it's too big, so we remove this first character. Uh, it's still too big because it still has both a zero and a one. We remove the next question mark, it's still too big, still has a zero and a one, remove this. Now we have this range. Uh, and there are two possible things here. Specifically, the two ranges we're counting are this range and this range. So all of the ranges that end here, we count how many of them there are. Uh, we can do this in linear time. Uh, it's amortized because in total, the right pointer moves a linear number of times, and the left pointer also moves a linear number of times. So it's order n amortized. Code for that looks like this. We read in the line. Uh, we flip every odd character that isn't a question mark. And then we go through the uh, go through the array, um, and if we have like we count the zeros and ones we get from our right pointer, and then if we have both a zero and a one, then we need to move our left pointer over until we have just one of them. Uh, all right, that is problem C. For problem D, playoff tournament, this problem is actually pretty easy. Uh, you basically just make the tree and then calculate it every time something changes. So this, yeah, the solution is pretty easy, but basically like uh, for each node in the tree, for me a node is a game, we just store how many teams could win uh, this game, right? So if this is a question mark, two teams could win it. If this, the smaller team wins, just one team could win it. So you build this tree and then you store what the parents are of each node, uh, the parent of each game. So in this case, the parents of games one and two would both be game five. Um, and then for game five, you know either the person who won game one would win, in which case the number of ways, the number of people who can win game five is just the number of ways for this children. Uh, and then we recalculate the answer all the way up to the root or vice versa, or it's like game two, or it's it could be either, in which case we just take the sum. And then again, we just recalculate all the way up to the root. So yeah, this is actually pretty easy. The tricky part is just implementing it, uh, which might be a bit like difficult if you, you're not familiar with trees before. Terribly sorry, terribly sorry. Uh, yeah, so if you're not familiar with trees, might be a bit difficult to implement, but uh, if you are, it's not not too bad. Here's what my code looks like. Um, I just have all of these nodes here. Uh, this does the exact same logic I was talking about earlier. Uh, if it's a question mark, it's just the sum of your two kids. Otherwise, it's whichever of the two kids um, you created. And then when I set something, I recursively modify you and your parent all the way up to the root. The way I do it is I index my nodes the same way you would in an array-based segment tree. So for me, I make the root be this node. This is node zero. And the kids of the, or this is node one, sorry. And the kids of the root are two times one and then two times one plus one, right? So two times x and then two times x plus one are your two kids. Uh, and then you can just kind of like uh, flip the order of each of these games and then it works as well. That's one way of doing it. Um, yeah, there, the code isn't really too interesting because it's all just right here. Uh, and there are different ways of ordering your nodes and stuff, but I'll scroll through mine slowly. And then if you're concerned, you can pause and look at it. 
Uh, but yeah, that's problem D. So the idea is just simulate it and then modify the changes back up to the root. Last one's problem E, gold transfer. So for this problem, uh, basically you have a bunch of queries um, and there are a bunch of different ways of handling them. But what the queries are is you've got some tree and you're building this tree online. So the tree looks like this maybe. Um, and you might have a query like, okay, add this node here. And then you might have some other query, which is like, look at some path from some node all the way to the root. And then for this path, you need to buy k things, right? So buy k, put bases there, buy k things, things, buy k things. Uh, and you want to buy, of all of the things you can buy, buy k things. Um, buy k things along this path and you want to buy the cheapest k of them and then you want to know how many of them you can buy and what the total cost is um, really you just want to know what like how many things are along the path um, or at least are there at least k along the path and if so what's the sum of the smallest k of them so yeah, that's the idea. Uh, how do you solve this? You can, <coughs> excuse me, you can solve this using link cut trees. Um, I'm not gonna talk about exactly how link cut trees work because they're a pretty advanced data structure, but uh, it's a pretty basic link cut tree problem. You can do a much simpler version of link cut trees because you don't need the make root method and you don't need cut because you're only adding to the tree. Um, and the path aggregate is just the min along the path. And you don't need find root either. So all you need is access link and path aggregate. Uh, so it's pretty easy. And then the link is even easier than usual because you know that node U is a brand new node. So it's super easy there. Um, good, good. Uh, yeah, so lastly, uh, you just need a splay tree. So if you're familiar with splay trees, you can use those. The solution ends up being n log n, but in Java, my implementation is too slow, fails the time limit. So it'd be really nice if they like compress the queries in some way to force it to be online without making it be really slow, because it's kind of just killed, just killed Java. Uh, so I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, what do I mean by compressed queries? In case you're the person who wrote this round, who did write this round? Let me check. So it looks like it wasn't Vuv. All right, if you're the person who wrote this round, what you can do in the future to avoid this is instead of having people read in and print each of these answers, you can have like some answer and then have all of the input XOR the previous answer. Um, yeah, so th the problem is it would be nice if we could do it like this. In practice, we can't because it makes Java solutions impossible, right? So the only way for me to get this problem is to convert exactly the code I had into C++ and I got it in 1.1 seconds, 1.2 seconds. But in Java, it takes over four and a half. So I don't know, maybe I'm close to the time limit. I'm not really sure. I'm just like slightly off, but I just found it obnoxious to be honest. Um, okay, so yeah, that's, that's problems A through E. Problem F, I didn't really get much of a chance to work on. Uh, because I spent most of contest converting E to C++. So yeah, I'm glad it wasn't rated for me <laughs> because if it were, that would have been very disappointing uh, that I had a solution an hour in, didn't get it till almost two hours in. But yeah. Um, cool, that's my contest. I thought all of the problems were good. I thought E had time limit issues and I think those were problem writer fault I don't think those are my issue. Uh, I feel like you can't do interactive problems that way if you're going to support Java. And for an educational round or a code forces round, you definitely should be supporting Java. That's just my opinion, though, to each his own. OK. Uh, yeah, so those are the solutions. Hope you enjoyed. Um, that's all from me. And I'll see you in Code Jam round three, which is tomorrow, if you qualified. If you didn't, it doesn't hurt to look at the code or look at the problems and maybe think about them a bit on your own, even if you're not participating officially. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Oh my goodness, voice crack. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Uh, goodbye.